Welcome to my channel. Super Fairy 14 2004 The MV Super Fairy 14 was a roll-on, roll-off ferry based in the Philippines. The ferry was built in 1981 by a Japanese company. The ferry was very luxurious inside at the time. It was on the night of February 27, 2004 that the ferry departed from Manila, making its way to its final destination of Cagayan de Oro City. On board there was 899 passengers and crew. Unbeknown to those on board, the ferry was carrying what is believed to be a television set, which contained a 8-pound TNT bomb in the lower deck, which was said to be crowded with passengers. Just an hour after the ferry had departed, an explosion tore through the ferry, starting a fire which would engulf the ferry. The captain quickly issued the abandoned ship order at around 1.30 p.m. The fire spread across the ferry. Most of the survivors had to jump into the sea to save themselves, or try to get onto the rescue boats. By February 29, 565 people had been accounted for, others were either dead or missing. Those who were missing were pressed some to still be trapped inside the ferry. It was feared that most of the missing could have drowned. It was believed that recovery of bodies still trapped would take several months to be completed. Slowly the bodies would be recovered, but many more still remained missing. It was first thought that the blast had been a terrible accident, but at the Marine Board of Inquiry hearing in March 2004, a safety supervisor testified that around 150 of the survivors had reported to him that an explosion had taken place in the crowded section of the ferry. The captain also informed them that the thick black smoke had smelled to him like gunpowder, which led them to the conclusion that it had been a bomb. Redondo Candelisa of the Raja Suleiman movement confessed to planting the bomb on board the ferry, which was triggered by a timing device on behalf of the Abu Sayyaf group. It was found that the culprit had entered the ferry and planted the device, then left the ferry before it departed. On October 11, 2004, investigators concluded that the explosion had been caused by the bomb, and that six suspects had been arrested in connection with the bombing. It was believed that Abu Sayyaf had bombed the ferry as the owner did not comply with a letter which had been sent, demanding one million in protection money. The ferry would eventually be raised and sold for scrap. Sadly it is believed that 116 people died as a result of the ferry disaster. Redondo Candelisa was jailed for the crime. We forever remember all those who died that day, and all those on board the ferry. May you never be forgotten. 2018, Table Rock Duck Boat Accident The duck boat is a wheeled amphibious vehicle which was once used by the United States military during World War II, and in the Korean War. These vehicles soon became a business, giving rides to those on the Wisconsin River. There had already been several fatal accidents involving duck boats, one of which happened on May 1, 1990, where sadly 13 people died. After this, the National Transportation Safety Board had made several recommendations for these amphibious vehicles. However, it seems that these recommendations had been ignored. The accident of Table Rock Duck Boat occurred not long after 7 p.m. on July 19, 2018. At the time, severe thunderstorms were making their way to that area, and it is believed that just an hour prior to departing, the National Weather Station had issued a weather warning for that area. It is unclear whether the crew on the duck boat knew about these weather warnings before they departed. It was at around 7.09 p.m. when the first 911 call was received. It is believed that the boat was now already going under the water. Sadly, 17 people would not make it that night, with 9 people being members of the same family. 
It is also believed that none of the passengers or crew were wearing life jackets, even though this had been one of the NTSB recommendations for these duck boats. The NTSB quickly dispatched its investigators to the site of the accident. Tia Coleman who lost nine members of their family claimed that the crew had told passengers not to put on life jackets because they didn't need them. The owner of the company who owned the duck boat announced that they would pay for funeral and medical expenses for the passengers on board that night. A federal indictment against the captain, Kenneth Scott McKee was soon announced, and he was charged with 17 counts of misconduct, negligence, or inattention to duty by a ship's officer resulting in death. It was also reported that he failed to properly assess the incoming weather conditions that night. In July 2019, Curtis Langham who was the general manager, and Charles Baltzell the operations supervisor were also indicted for multiple felonies relating to the accident. The National Transportation Safety Board stated that recommendations had been repeatedly ignored, that could have made these tourist duck boats safer to those using them. They had found that the fixed canopy and closed side curtains stopped the passengers from escaping. It was in December 20, 20 that the federal judge dismissed all charges against the three employees. However, in July 2021, charges were filed against Captain Kenneth Scott McKee, Curtis Langham, and Charles Baltzell. They were charged with 17 counts of first-degree involuntary manslaughter, and five counts of first-degree endangering the welfare of a child. Lawsuits were filed against the company. The final lawsuit was settled in 2020. 31 lawsuits had been filed and all settled for undisclosed amounts. Our hearts go out to the families of those who died that night and all those who were on the boat. May you never be forgotten. Sadly, these events continue to happen, for everyone out there, stay safe. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel to view other content.